All right, hello everyone. My name is Jason Praga, and I'm the application developer for the Ameris IBM Joint Study OpenFlow Research Team. Today, we're going to show you a little demo of our application called Avir. So, there are two ways to get Avir. You can get it from the GitHub and download the source and compile it if you want, or you can download it straight from the website by going to openflow.maris.edu and then clicking on the Avir tab. You'll see three different distributions. We're going to click on Linux because we're using Ubuntu. Just download the file like so. And once we have it downloaded, we open up command prompt. And we can issue this command to run the jar. It's very similar to Floodlight. And then you'll see this screen pop up, which is the AVR launch screen. From here, you just enter the IP address of the remote controller to begin. This is a main landing page for Avir that you'll see once you open it up. You'll see two primary tabs here on the left. There's an overview and there's a tools tab. The overview tab is very similar to Westfelter's web UI. It just gives you generic information about the network. It's, it's very basic at the moment and that's one feature that we're going to be working on. Uh, so if you click on the controller tab, you can see uh, information about the host name, JVM memory bloat, modules loaded. The switch tab gives you what you think it would. It would give you the switches on the network. So we have two uh, virtual switches running on Mininet at the moment and they have no flows, no activity yet. Um, and then the last tab which is devices which gives you the different devices on the network, the MAC address, the IP address, etc. And since we have not generated any traffic on the network, uh, it's currently empty. So, more importantly, uh, what's interesting about this application is the flow manager, uh, which is very useful for adding and modifying and deleting flows. So, um, here we have the, the flow manager view. On the left side here, you can see the different switches in the network. If you click on uh, these switches, you'll bring off the flows for them, and you'll see that there are no flows. So what we're going to do is uh, actually create a flow. So we're going to copy the flow used in the static flow pusher example on the OpenFlow Hub website. So we'll just click on a switch, switch one, click on new flow. Uh, you'll see a list of different parameters and values here. Uh, they'll look very familiar so we're just going to edit the name first of all flow mod one and then you can click on the actions row to get an action manager which is uh, a very easy way to add actions to your flow um, as you can see here there's a different list of actions which make it very easy to add actions um, but we're going to keep it very simple and just select output and enter port 2 and then from here we just hit save and you'll see this pop up here on the left with the parameter of port 2 we can exit here and then we'll continue on to the match. Um, here you'll have another large array of, of parameters and values. Um, we only have to insert an ingress port of one, so we'll just go to the input port here and type one. Hit save, easy as that. Continue on to insert some values uh, for the priority 32768 and a cookie of zero. And then everything else will remain default. And then from here we just select push and then we'll get a confirmation message like so entry pushed hit ok and now we have our flow here in the network uh, we can click it on it again to modify it or delete it if we wish but just to verify that it's on the network we can actually um, look at the rest API and there it is flow mod 1 output port 2 here's the actions listed um, and the match listed here input port 1 so everything you wanted um, made very simple so there's also the ability to modify flows. So say we want to modify the action for this flow or the match. We can go into the match. Um, well, that's a glitch. But <laughs> um, say we want to modify the network source. We can just enter 10.10.10.10. Hit save. And then push that flow once again. We got an error message, but that's OK. And then we can look at the REST API. We'll hit refresh. And there you can see the network source of 10.10.10. .10 so it's really that easy to modify flows. Now, um, the last thing that you can do is, is delete flows. And we'll do that very quickly. Um, just select the flow and hit delete. And you can also just hit delete all flows for the switch that is selected. But um, we only have one, so we'll just delete flow. Get another confirmation message. And then you're all set. So that is um, everything that you can do with the, the application so far. Uh, there's several other features that we like to implement as Flowlight develops. Um, 
for more information, you can always visit openflow.maris.edu and um, check out what we're doing here with Openflow at Maris. And if you want to email us, you can email us at openflow at maris.edu. Thank you very much.